Are you guys able to see the presentation? Yes. Yes. Okay, so this is our presentation for Gardovia Gardens, um, the San Antonio regional team, and our deliverables will be presented uh, in this slideshow. I'm Sharnel Chin, and uh, I've been with the mission continues since 2009, and I've worked alongside Gardopia Gardens um, previously and prior to the SLC. Um, I'll turn over to the rest of the group members to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Addie Trevino. I am an Army vet. I have been with the mission continues and Gardopia Gardens um, since 2016. Um, that's a little bit about me. Hey, Charles, Hi. if you're trying to talk to us, you're on mute. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah, sorry about that, buddy. Uh, yes, yeah, I'm Charles Henry. I've uh, been uh, I'm with the San Antonio uh, Second Platoon as well. Uh, with Addy, I've been with Mission Continue since uh, 2012 with the fellowship program. And uh, we're happy to be here. Next slide, Shana. Okay, so without further ado, our presentation will. Um, give a brief intro to our project partner and his organization, Gardopia Gardens. Um, we'll also go through our project objective, um, our deliverables, and some of the results from our research to include maps, um, what we accomplished with our survey and marketing efforts, and um, um, recommendations going forward. Um, Addie will be covering um, Gardopia Gardens for us. Oh, I'm sorry. I was speaking and, I, I didn't, and I'm sorry. So uh, Gardopia Gardens was uh, established in 2015 by uh, Stephen Lucky, who is the CEO. And his uh, thing was to um, start on the east side of San Antonio which had high crime and also a lot of uh, empty lots um, that those empty lots created the high crime because that's where they would gather. And also for uh, food disparity um, on the east side of San Antonio, um, they only have um, uh, small stores, one HEB and that's uh, side of town. And when you go into the store, there's a lot of uh, juices, unhealthy juices, donuts and cakes where they when you first enter very small produce area and so he decided to um to create this garden and was given a space um to help the community become more knowledgeable and healthy eating his mission was growing healthy communities through garden-based learning and his vision is a sustainable society empowered and educated to lead healthy lifestyles through gardening he also has, Stephen also has uh, smaller herb gardens with um, privately owned restaurants throughout the city of San Antonio. They use their, their herbs and produce. Uh, he also has a chicken coop in one of them and they use the eggs and everything into their uh, healthy choice uh, eating uh, restaurants. Also, um, He's, uh, the main focus is health and wellness focus, provided education and access to fresh produce, uh, which he does through education, where he uh, talks about how you can grow your own garden. 
um, when to grow different um, items or produce or vegetables in your garden, um, how deep it has to be. He gives you the whole uh, nine yards of how to build a privately owned garden or establish a, a bigger garden, farm, farm like garden. Um, he's addressing obesity by um, and health care costs and climate change by providing fresh fruits and vegetables to the community uh, so they can have a healthier eating lifestyle um, in, that's included in their meals um, so they don't have to always go back to, and divert back to the sugary um, types of items for eating. Next slide. Okay, so our project objective was to conduct research and use this data for a $1 million USDA grant. Um, going forward, this information will also be to expand the food system in greater San Antonio. Um, so our deliverables um, featured a list of uh, urban agriculture um, related organizations and businesses. Um, maps of existing gardens and farms, potential land for gardening, grocery stores, farmers market, and we also um, completed a registration survey um, that was implemented on Gardopia's website and also um, did some marketing for the spring garden competition. Uh, next slide, map of uh, Yes, uh, so as you see, our project uh, is, is data driven. And so that was the whole onset for our project. Uh, here you'll see on the map of potential land, we broke it down uh, by districts, and we also broke it down by precinct. Uh, so our project partner, Stephen, he had uh, requested that we find land, five to 10 acres, uh, that was available for sale uh, through the city and the county. And so as you see, some of them are closer together and some are spread apart based on the rural land or the area that was available. Uh, so we picked land that would be available for that section. Also, in the, closer in the city, you'll see uh, in those city limits, there was only maybe 1.2 1, 1 to 2 acres of available land uh, for garden uh, that was for sale obviously due uh, to being in the city. And then in the rural areas, we had more, more land for sale and for higher acreage, five to 10 acres. Next slide. In this side, you see the map of the grocery stores in San Antonio. If you look closer, uh, the east side of San Antonio um, have the less less available gardening, I mean, I'm sorry, less available grocery stores, um, which is off of 35. And 35, if you can see it in a map, on um, 35 in New Braunfels area is the area where Guadopia Gardens main garden is for the east side of San Antonio. So you can see that there's very little um, grocery stores in that area. Um, so, uh, San Antonio as a whole have 110, um, grocery stores, um, that includes Target, Walmart, H-E-B, Sprouts, um, they closed down several Sprouts, Walmart, Neighborhood, La Fiesta, Trader Joe's, and Central Market are the main stores, uh, grocery stores for San Antonio. Next slide. Okay, so we also completed a map of the farmers markets um, available within the San Antonio area. Um, we're seeing that there is a cluster of them within the city limits, but there's also um, a supply chain outside of city limits um, to include New Braunfels and um, Astroville. Okay, so Addy worked with um, Gardopia Gardens to um, complete a garden 
the spring garden competition survey. Um, the registration form was posted online. And so res residents could visit um, and sign up through Gardopia's website. We also shared the flyer on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, emailed some of those flyers out as well. And I know Charles conducted um, person meetings with community partners to share this information as well. For recommendations, um, something that we felt was a heavy focus would be cultural advocacy. Um, so from the side, you can see local events promoting unhealthy options. And we find that this is creating a need for cultural advocacy in the sanitary region where health and wellness is concerned. Um, Addy, do you want to add anything? Yes, uh, we also have, San Antonio also have what is known as the Barbacore and Big Red Festival that um, promotes unhealthy eating. Um, and it's thousands of people from all over uh, the United States come to that. Also, San Antonio provides um, 1,500 um, top free tacos every year uh, as the kickoff for the rodeo and people line up for three o'clock in the morning until they serve them at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, that provides an, another unhealthy um, way of eating. Also San Antonio being a, a Tex-Mex slash Latino community, um, there are crazy amount of store uh, restaurants and taco stands around the city of San Antonio. Just in my area alone, there's 30. And that's only within a two mile radius. So it just shows how unhealthy San Antonio is across the, uh, and being one of the most unhealthy cities in the United States. Yes, thank you, Addy. Uh, also, the recommendations that uh, we have listed are detailed in the consultant report uh, we'll send to Stephen and to the entire TMC team um, after this report, I'm sorry, after this project. The illustrations of flyers here are pictures of unhealthy events. The county, the city, and the San Antonio Monthly Magazine advertise heavily to our city, citizens of San Antonio. The next topic you see is something near and dear to our group for me personally, as this training in our SLT program was one of our favorite sessions. We decided to incorporate the piece into our project after the Atlanta session. The cultural advocacy component comes into play with our 10-year education campaign because of the significance to changing the culture of San Antonio is not an overnight mission. The city and county partners currently play a significant role in contributing to the obesity epidemic in San Antonio, Texas. <clears throat> as you see as well as I mentioned, San Antonio is listed as one of the most unhealthiest cities due to the major marketing of our year-long unhealthy food events as well as the culture of unhealthy eating. This is where that education campaign comes into play. If we're able to capture our new residents coming to San Antonio, currently 690,000 Californians this year, this will change the landscape of Texas. This can help the deep-rooted culture of unhealthy lifestyles by bringing cultures and new residents collaborating on how to bring new healthier eating habits to our areas that we previously underdeveloped, such as the Pearl. Next slide. The next slide here, you'll see our community partners, uh, the city, the Parks and Recs, SA Food Bank, HEB, Bay County, if we can capitalize on Head Start and Community First Health programs with those initiatives that they have, it can go into the next slide as well. If we can capitalize with those two at the very bottom, Head Start and Community First, we can implement a 10 year campaign, education campaign with marketing into our city. At this time, that wraps up our conclusion of our presentation and we'll be happy to take any questions. Great, thanks for presenting. Hi guys, uh, this is Jenna. Great job, um, super excited to see you guys, even if it's virtually and hear more in depth about your project. Um, <clears throat> I'd love to hear, you know, we know 
things don't always go perfectly smooth as we plan and sometimes we get surprised um, to see things that arise that we weren't expecting that we're really excited about. Um, so I'd love to hear what you guys saw as either challenges um, or also um, things that were really highlights for you throughout uh, working on this project. Jana, can you please repeat that? I'm sorry, my daughter came in and I, I didn't get to hear the question. Yeah, I was um, just saying I would love to hear anything that you guys identified as challenges while working on this project or um, highlights for the project as well. Like what were some of the highlights throughout doing this and, and the, the program? Adia Chanel, you want to go first or you want me to go first? I can go. Um, so we have like a group of very different personalities and it was very difficult to kind of maneuver that. Um, but I think we figured it out at the end. So very thankful for that, everybody coming together um, to just get the job done. Um, as far as gathering the information, um, we had some help from another cohort, um, John Braun. He helped us gather some of the information that we've used for this project. So very thankful for that um, and having to build those relationships within the cohort um, was very important even to our project. So um, besides that, we just saw that there was the, the mission of the Bardopia Gardens is very progressive and while it's very important that we have this um, resource in our communities, um, I think the focus that we're going forward needs to be on encouraging participation from the community. Uh, yes, I would like to piggyback on what Charnell said about John Braun. He was a, a very good asset. Um, not only is he in the cohort, but he was an absolutely great asset uh, in order to get this information compiled and put together for our presentation. Um, yes, we do have very different personalities, um, um, but we didn't let that hinder our progress in doing what we had needed to do uh, to get the presentation together. Um, we came together as adults and um, overcame all the obstacles um, that we had and we put the presentation together. I think my high is uh, learning um, more about gardening and this project within itself. Um, I grew up with a garden, so I knew a lot about it already, but it's just something that came back up from my past and um, I've grown to love it. I've started eating more healthier, um, less snacking, uh, eat more vegetables because of Steven, and um, it's changed my life uh, a lot. So I really am thankful for Steven, getting to know him, not only on a business level, but uh, somewhat of a personal level, because I also deal with him outside of um, uh, TMC. Um, so, um, it just it just helped me just realize how unhealthy we do eat. Um, I'm a bit eating out less, um, and this cohort has been very um, very uh, challenging. I think I guess I could say um, some of the things that um, has arisen with uh, with the the different presentations. Uh, I have had. Um, some issues with, um, but I talked it over uh, with Kathy and um, she made me see the other side of everything. So um, it wasn't what I expected, but it was what was what was needed, I guess we could say. And uh, <clears throat> it's helped me uh, grow in my own, <clears throat> sorry guys, in my own personal life. <clears throat> sorry guys. Um, as becoming a better person. So I think um, this is very hard for us to uh, actually do this virtual. Um, and I see the fear of America. Uh, this 
has really dampened my spirit somewhat, uh, but we made it through. So that's all I have to say. All right. Um, for me personally, uh, the challenges, um, as the lady said, and, and most people know, many people have different personalities and, and that's fine. We just have to work together as soldiers. We learn to adapt, overcome and, and continue, you know, continue the mission. And um, the real challenges, uh, I believe in the beginning we had were uh, breaking down the data. So John, as I said, uh, John is a great friend and he provided us the, a lot of the data and real estate. Also another friend, uh, John, uh, Jaime Aguilone, uh, another realtor provided us city and county as well data uh, for our project. And that was really instrumental uh, in having the cohort and having uh, friends in real estate to help us uh, find property and land. Um, so we received thousands and thousands of, uh, of listings and, and data that we all had to scrub through. And Charnel and Addy were very essential in uh, us breaking down and looking through data to put it into our maps. Um, a highlight for me um, for the program overall would be um, the Atlanta session, Culture Advocacy. I, I loved it. I love that story of that gentleman. Um, and also uh, for Stephen, I think, as Charnel had said, uh, gardening and things like that, that was something very new to me, something I had zero knowledge of. Addie had a lot of knowledge about gardening and things like that. Uh, so learning from Addy, learning from Steven uh, was very essential in our project. Uh, and it's very telling of the times, especially what we're going through right now, uh, for people to have some basic uh, understanding of gardening uh, for sustainability for their homes and for their families. Um, so that was my overall take uh, on our cohort and on the project. Oh, I just wanted to say one last thing. Uh, being that the grocery stores are pr practically clear of everything, the one thing you will find is vegetables. So if you guys want to go out into the grocery store, get your vegetables and start eating healthy now while you can. <laughs> Appreciate that. Hi, everyone. Um, so my question is, when you think about this project, um, and the recommendation that you, you came to here at the end. Uh, I have two questions. Um, if you could think back to the last six months of your experience in the program, what are the key pieces of learning skills tools that really were beneficial in this? And then the second question is, um, what was missing or what would you have liked to have learned or been exposed to that would have helped you even more? I think for me personally, um, there were a lot of helpful sessions that we completed throughout the program, especially the affinity, um, just kind of identifying other key partners within the community that can help um, move this vision forward. I think that's something, um, if it's available, that we could take in as well. Um, also, the session around cultural advocacy really helped us to put things into perspective, um, just some of the challenges that we were facing within um, just our own project. So that was helpful as well. Um, what I would have liked to see was um, availability of like platforms to kind of visualize some of this information. Um, even the grant writing process to kind of have um, an introduction to that and how we could um, help push um, students mission forward in that sense. Um, my take from it was um, I did like the gentleman's story um, in Atlanta uh, that was really awesome um, for him to share his story and how great that was. Also for um, Mrs. King, um, 
to let me know that I need to keep pushing forward in order to make change come alive. Um, not only for myself, but for generations to come and people around me. Um, I think what I personally think we should have got more of is the grant writing and how to push um, our initiatives with the um, public officials that's in our area. Um, especially being here in San Antonio, it's very hard to push uh, for District 2. Um, I talked to Jada um, Solomon Smith, uh, who is the city councilwoman for that area. Um, she uh, knows nothing about gardening and uh, wasn't very interested in my presentation when I had a meeting uh, with her. Only thing she was interested in basically was uh, trying to help us uh, get the word out. Um, but for her personally, for her to actually take the hold to help us, um, help the community have more, um, have more knowledge of what Stephen is doing. I didn't see her enthusiasm about it. Also had a meeting with um, the mayor's assistant um, before I had the meeting with District 2. And um, they didn't even know about Guardopia Gardens at all. And so um, just sharing that knowledge with them and, and having them understand and know what was going on within the community and how they could uh, uh, spread the word um, was very refreshing um, for me to uh, attend and also um, um, what's her name? Our, our um, city uh, manager, uh, impact manager uh, also uh, was in that meeting along with me. So I think um, just getting the word out more on uh, for us to learn how to get the word out and have people interested and engaged in what we're actually doing and saying um, could have been more beneficial. Also, uh, the grant writing, I felt like uh, we should have spent maybe two or three hours on the grant writing. Um, but we only had we only had like 30 minutes to an hour, I guess, and I'm still left clueless about the grant writing. Um, the challenge I seen was uh, having an overflow of the um, cultural accuracy uh, as far as the different types and names for the LGBT community. Um, I didn't deem that to be necessary. I have people um, within my family and friends and I already know um, I treat everybody like they want to be treated. How they treat me is how I treat you. So I didn't think it's, I felt like that that was capitalized on way more than it needed to be. Okay. Um, <clears throat> for me, um, the asset-based uh, learning, uh, for me being like a natural problem solver, problem fixer, I had to learn for the asset-based uh, was essential in learning to use what we already had here uh, in our city and with our projects and to see what Steven had already had established and what he already uh, had going in the community uh, as this was my first time learning about uh, Gardopia Gardens uh, as well. Um, what I would like to have seen more uh, would be more service projects at each in each city that we were at. Um, so as you know, like in the military, we go to we go to training in the morning at AIT school, and then we go do it. You know, in the afternoon, we have the morning class, and then you go go out and do what you're uh, taught. So I believe that uh, maybe we could have implemented a service project at each event or at each city to implement what we had learned in the training sessions throughout the day. I think that would be a uh, beneficial and uh, hands-on approach. And that's it for me for that question. I have one question. First, thank you guys. This is great. And I and thank you for your for your feedback as well, which is always super helpful and um, it can only help us improve the program. So thank you for giving us some candid feedback. 
Um, the one question, especially with Stephen on the call also is, um, what is it that you think that um, the impact will be on Gardentopia for, for the work that you've done? And Stephen, if, if you wanna chime in too for kind of how this project um, will help the work that you do and, and, um, and what you'll be able to take from this time. Sure, sure, yeah, that's a great question. Um, well, first of all, you know, just from the beginning, um, you know, I, I founded Gardopia five years ago with zero dollars, and we're still pretty poor at the moment. So having others who are committed and knowledgeable and uh, have expert subject matter in one area or another was awesome. You know, uh, Charles has, you know, at least one, maybe two master's degrees. Addie has her degree. Charnel's working on her master's in business. And so it was just awesome to be able to have them as a sounding board and sort of learn from them as well. Um, that's, you know, was a blessing each time we had a meeting. Um, in addition, having their resources bringing to the table and really addressing the question I had at hand, which essentially other cities like Vancouver, New York, Toronto, LA, uh, Seattle, Portland, I, the list goes on, uh, even Austin, Texas, have done something called what the State of the Food System Report. And the city of San Antonio has not done a state of the food system report. In 2016, we created a 40 year plan or a 20 year plan called Essay Tomorrow, which is supposed to be guiding all of our policy actions from 2020 to 2040. Uh, most recently, last fall in 2019, we passed the Climate Action and Adaptation Plan, which is really focusing on climate change. And both of those plans, which have, were vetted from a community level for multiple years, have stated that they want to have a state of the food system report, they want to hire a food policy coordinator, and they really want to create self food self-sufficiency, food security, um, and environmental change for our community, but it hasn't happened. And so this is like sort of the first steps. They're really just um, laying the groundwork for us to be able to continue that. And so creating that map um, is going to be a really good foundation for us to continue doing research on. Uh, they research, they mentioned a USDA grant for a million dollars. Um, we partnered with the University of the Incarnate Word and St. Philip's College. Um, UIW is a Hispanic serving institution. St. Philip's is a Hispanic serving institution and a HBCU. And we applied, we didn't go for the million, we went for a quarter of a million, 250,000. And so, um, you know, I'm very hopeful that we get that grant and I'm very hopeful to be able to continue partnering with the Mission Continues. You know, it's not, I don't see this as just like a one-time thing. We do the project and it's done. Um, we've been partnering with y'all. Uh, somebody mentioned Kay Glaze in the first platoon and uh, Angie and now Sandra Davis, who's our platoon leader. So it's awesome just to have multiple uh, programs from the Mission Continues who are helping amplify our mission um, in the city. And so I see this report, um, one, you know, I'm gonna ask the team to present this to our board of directors um, in, in the near future. And then taking this report and all of their recommendations and trying to move forward with some of the suggestions. Um, the cultural advocacy part, um, for me, I am very health focused and I'm very um, like at the 10,000 sort of foot uh, view, but it, it's important and this reminded me um, that there are different people out there from all different backgrounds. And just because it's the best thing to do, in my opinion, uh, doesn't necessarily mean that's everybody's opinion. And it doesn't mean that there doesn't need to be uh, education and advocacy and awareness campaigns around this to be able to change people's hearts and minds and hopefully eventually their behaviors. Um, so that's sort of, uh, you know, in a nutshell, how I felt during the process and how I feel we're gonna be able to continue it. Real quick, I just wanna show y'all because if you can see my screen, um, I am here at Gardopia on the near east side of San Antonio. They talked to y'all a little bit about um, the divestment and the neglect that's happened in this community for uh, multiple decades. But I just want to show y'all sort of what we've done. I don't know if I can change my, oh, I can, I can change my camera. So just one moment. I'm going to walk y'all through. Y'all are, uh, you know, in your different respective cities. And so I know we didn't get to meet in DC, but hopefully um, y'all can sort of see, you know, what we are are doing here to create a garden utopia on the east side of San Antonio. That's our, our welcoming sign. We planted trees. We have a, a rain garden, a, a keyhole garden, uh, really trying to create sustainability on this uh, half acre lot, rainwater collection. We're getting a shipping container here uh, on Monday. 
So yeah, I just wanted to give you all a quick little tour and that's my, uh, my two cents. That's great, thank you. Um, for myself personally, I think that um, we all kind of see how the world of information is changing, how um, businesses, nonprofits move forward with their information. And I thought that this was very helpful. Having us realize like what focus areas, um, stuff that um, the the organization needs to be focusing on to kind of expand its capacity and its reach to the community members. Um, I, I think it's a very good initiative and I feel like it's uh, going to grow because of, not only because of this presentation, but because of our partnership with Stephen. Um, we can move it to higher uh, heights and get more people involved. Um, even with his board members, what he was saying, uh, recapping on that, um, us doing a presentation for them, and then they go and talk to their friends and their business partners, and just getting the word out on how um, this healthy lifestyle, this healthy way of living is very much needed, not just for San Antonio, but for the, um, the whole nation, uh, uh, culturally. Um, um, we have the U.S. has a, a large pool of food from all over. Um, every country is poured into here. And um, whereas some are more healthier than others, it's just awesome to, to see how the transition can be made from eating unhealthy. Not saying not to do it at all, because some of our favorite things are unhealthy, but just to alleviate um, the mass amount that you intake of unhealthy products and have it grow into something more healthier, which would actually um, prevent health costs, uh, health issues costs. Uh, uh, the health organization um, is on a rise because of us uh, eating unhealthy. And so people are having obese, obesity and high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and all these different uh, liver problems and different types of cancers and stuff like that. And there's a lot of ways that you can prevent those things just by eating differently, just eating more healthy. Um, also, I, I feel like um, the garden could be a, a place of serenity um, and um, transformation. Um, you can go out there and you can talk to people and if somebody has a problem, you can talk them through the problem if you have knowledge of what they're having a need of. And um, it's very relaxing. Um, if any of you, I don't know if any of you have experienced gardening before, but it's very relaxing and it has you one with nature. And so that part within itself uh, is a plus uh, because we also, some of our health problems again, uh, is due to stress. Uh, so having that outlet um, is very important. Self-care, as you guys have been teaching us throughout the uh, SLC cohort, is to have self-care. Even during this time, it's very, very important to have self-care um, because of what's going on. So I think it's, I think it's gonna grow, and I think it's gonna grow not only through San Antonio, but through the state of Texas. And uh, as long as we keep partnering with Steven, um, I think we can have a lot of different changes made um, and we get more people on board. Uh, yes, for me, um, I just pick back off what the lady said. I, I completely agree. And stuff we've been talking about in moving forward uh, after, you know, this project was done. And I believe with the recommendations and for me, um, as for our group, uh, we just see this as a huge uh, marketing and education campaign moving forward. And with those two things, if you focus in on the marketing, you focus in on the education campaign of the city, um, that will grow Gardopia Gardens uh, and that will grow uh, the healthier lifestyles here in San Antonio.
Cool. Well, we got about uh, 10 or 12 minutes left if anybody has any other questions or comments or anything. I don't have a question, but this was a lively group. Kept me on my toes for sharing your time with me and um, we'll be looking forward to seeing you in the future. Yeah, we, we definitely appreciate all the time and energy and effort that you three have put into into this project. Um, it, it shows and you know it, it's great it's great to have more than one program from TMC contribute to a community partner and um, I'm excited to see the impact that TMC has on Gardopia Gardens um, and thanks for the tour Stephen that was a really nice layout. I uh, appreciate it. Um, so yeah with that um, I think we can we can close for the San Antonio group. Um, yeah, definitely appreciate your presentation and look forward to hearing from you guys soon.